What type of functional group is this? A carboxylic acid. That's right. Now, oops. That's not what I meant to draw. Let's try again. Here we have, in addition to the carboxylic acid, there's another carbonyl group. Another carbonyl group. Which carbon is the carbonyl group on? It's on what we could call the beta carbon. If we treat this as the principal functional group, then this is the alpha carbon, and this is the beta carbon. So we could call this a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid. And the key point is that beta carbonyl carboxylic acids can decarboxylate okay. under moderate heating. Under moderate heating, a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid will decarboxylate. Okay. Now your instructor did talk about the mechanism for this reaction, and it might come up on the test, but we don't have time to talk about it. Um, so you can just review it in the lecture notes. In most cases, you wouldn't go through the mechanism. In most cases, you should just show the product of decarboxylation. It's very simple. Decarboxylation simply removes the carboxyl group. It simply removes the carboxyl group. So you simply have to circle the carboxyl group. The carboxylic group? The, the, the acid or just uh, paper? This whole thing is considered a carboxyl group. Um, it's the, but it's the carboxylic acid group. That would be another way of naming it. That is, you're circling the hydroxy and the carbonyl. Okay. That is, you're circling the carbon the, and the two oxygens and the hydrogen. All right. I'm not circling the alpha carbon. That's not going to get blasted away. And then the product here is this. And this is just done under heat. Yeah. All it takes is moderate heating. Moderate heating will blast away this, carbox, uh, this carboxyl group. This is actually a very important reaction. It comes up all the time. By the way, what happens? to this carboxyl group, it basically turns into carbon dioxide. You can see how that would work. Here we have a carbon and two oxygens. Well, here we have the carbon and two oxygens as well. In fact, I can even tell you what happened to this hydrogen over here. Is it the, it, it's, um, it would be hard to guess. Does it go to where the alpha carbon? Ah, had you already seen that, or did you figure no, it out? Well, right. Excellent. The That's very good. So you have to account for the, uh, yep. the lack of the filled octet. That's a really good insight. Yeah, most people don't um, think to count the hidden hydrogens, but this has two hidden hydrogens, and this has three. So this hydrogen over here has basically ended up over here. It might not be the same exact literal hydrogen, but the point is that we've traded places of the hydrogens over here. Um, usually, we wouldn't actually draw that, but anyway, um, that's right. So the carbon and the two oxygens turned into carbon dioxide. Here's the proton. Uh, if you look in the lecture notes, you'll be able to see the mechanism. It's actually a, a, a kind of cool mechanism, but we won't have time to talk about it. But anyway, this is the reaction. This isn't the beta carbon anymore, but I'm labeling it beta just to show that it used to be the beta carbon over here. All right, so it's very easy to show the products here. You simply blast off the carboxyl group and make no other changes. Blast off the carboxyl group, no other changes. You don't even usually have to even show the carbon dioxide because we don't care about that. What we care about is what happens to this. Now, this doesn't always happen. It only happens to beta carbonyl carboxylic acids. So there's two things that we need for this to happen. First, or at least two things. First of all, there needs to be a carboxylic acid group. Carboxylic acid derivatives don't cut it. It has to be an actual carboxylic acid group. And you need the beta carbonyl group. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when I first started out here, I drew a picture that I had to erase because I drew an alpha carbonyl. So it's not a alpha carbonyl or a gamma carbonyl. The carbonyl has to be on the beta carbon. When you look at the mechanism, you'll see why it has to be on the beta carbon. So it's got to be a beta carbonyl. So this group has to be a carboxylic acid group. But this group could be any carbonyl-containing compound. Here I drew it as a ketone. But it could have been an aldehyde, or an ester, or an amide. It could have been any carbonyl. So I didn't say beta ketone or beta aldehyde. So this is actually a beta carbonyl, any beta carbonyl. So over here, we need the carboxylic acid, but this could be any carbonyl. Okay. In fact, this could even be another carboxylic acid group. Okay. But in that case, you would only lose one of the carboxylic acids.
let's draw the product here. Does this have a carboxylic acid group? Yes. Does it have a beta carbonyl? Yes. It's good that you actually put in these labels over here. So that gave us this. You got five more minutes, or do you need to run? OK, so let's spend maybe five more minutes and finish this off. So um, OK, good. And we simply cut off this group, and we make no other changes, although in the back of our head, we might have thought about, what did we replace this with? We replaced it with a hydrogen. This now has one more hydrogen than it had in this picture over here. Does this molecule have the right prerequisites for decarboxylation when you're ready? This is what we're, this is called as a decarboxylation reaction. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned that. So th that's a logical name. This is called a decarboxylation because it involves the removal of a carboxyl group. Another name for a carboxylic acid group is just a carboxyl group. Okay. Well, does this have the prerequisites that we've mentioned for a decarboxylation? Yes, and it can take place uh, at uh, two locations. Right. Does it have a carboxylic acid group? Yes. And is there a beta carbonyl group? Yes. yes. Now, it doesn't matter that this beta carbonyl is also a carboxylic acid. Now, all that we're going to do here is remove the carboxyl carboxylic acid group. You can remove either one. It doesn't matter which one you remove because this is symmetric. Sure. So we should remove one of the carboxylic acid groups without making any other changes to the molecule. So it's good that you're in the habit now of labeling this beta carbon. That might be helpful here. So you decided to treat this like the carboxy group that was getting decarboxylated. If you'd wanted to, you could have treated the left-hand side, but you decided to do it here. So that's the answer. This carbon has lost its bond to the carboxy group, and it gained an extra bond to hydrogen, which we haven't drawn. So this is a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid, and the beta carbonyl could be any type of carbonyl. It could even be another carboxylic acid. But in that case, you only lose one of the carboxylic acids. Why can't we lose this one? Because after we've lost the first carboxylic acid, this is not a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid anymore. Now it only uh, now it's just a there is it's just a regular carboxylic acid. That'll make more sense when, when you look at the mechanism. You'll see why this can't decarboxylate again. This is a good problem that your instructor included in lecture. We want to predict the product. We can solve this using the same things we've already talked about, but we'll just have to take our time a little bit to apply our previous principles. <laughs> 